This is the second video to cover the first day items. Please take notes. If we're in a classroom environment, uh, feel free to just yell out my name if something really important comes up in the video that you just don't think can wait till afterwards. Ask me whatever question you have and then we'll continue. Uh, if it's something you think can wait, just write down the question and then ask me at the first moment uh, that you get. Please thoroughly read through your syllabus. This is our contract. Um, I believe that not understanding the syllabus is the number one reason for a student having, a, having an unpleasant experience in a class. I emphasize that this is our contract because I need to abide by it also. An example would be if I say, which I do, that I'm not going to round up final grades and yet I do for one student, then I'm violating my own syllabus. So some people might consider that inflexible, but I consider it to be a very fair way to grade where everybody is treated equal. If a student would complain about a grade in the class, the first thing that the dean or whoever's fielding the complaint would do is ask for a copy of the syllabus from you. Then they would ask me if it went that far, did I, the instructor, stick with it, what is written in my syllabus? So I expect you to read the syllabus on your own. However, I will now go over key components of the syllabus. I'll show uh, this sample syllabus on the screen with um, things that could be confusing because maybe they only apply to a specific class. I'll, I'll gray those out, but we'll spend most of the time focusing on the things that are pertinent to every class that I teach. The top parts of the syllabus are just the basic classroom information. Make sure you know the hours of your class. Sometimes the schedules are a little bit confusing the way they break it up between lecture and lab. I try to keep it straightforward on the syllabus and just tell you the times that you need to be with me. Um, I put my email on the syllabus over on this side, uh, but it has been my experience that it is a much better experience that if the students email me directly through the learning management system. So for most of you, that will be Canvas. And I'm not sure if there's just a, a weakness in the email system or if it's just um, students misspell my long last name and I always get asked, did you get my email? And I'm like, no. Um, but if students email me through Canvas, seems to be bulletproof, or close to it anyway. Um, the prof stevegwordpresscom we talked about that in the last video. That's where you find most of the assigned videos. And I believe we just answered two questions. The best way to email me is through your learning management system, which is Canvas, or if you're taking a class through Cal State University Fullerton, that would be Titanium. The website that contains most of the signed videos is right there up on the top right hand corner of the syllabus, profstevg.wordpress.com. Now, most of the rest of this, just by me giving you a description of the class, we already covered in class. If you're doing this on your own for whatever reason, then make sure you read this very thoroughly, write down any questions and ask them. Okay, expectations. I have very high expectations for you as a student and the projects that you produce. I expect that you'll listen when I'm speaking, not talks, text message, or surf the web, or work on projects from other classes. Um, uh, kind of a big offender lately has been watching like YouTube videos in the class, which obviously if they're for instructional purposes is awesome. But sometimes what happens is a, a group of students, two or more, will start watching funny videos and then pretty soon the whole class is tuned in. I've even had it to the point one time where I was like, you know, watching to see what everyone was laughing at. So let's not do that in the classroom, even on the breaks. Um, you know, and here's just one little side note. If, if you're here just because your parents told you you had to go to college and get a job and you, you know, made the, the smarter choice of the two and you just want to waste time, go to the library, you know, check in with me at the beginning and the end of the class. That way I won't drop you. But, you know, if you're just here to waste time, don't waste other people's time. Okay. Um, 
I expect that you'll read the project handouts. About 70% of the projects that I give have a very specific handout that goes along with them. And um, it's kind of like a handout slash grade sheet. I'll show you an example of one in a second here. But use that as a checklist. I don't care if you write all over them. I'll just look at what color you, pen you use and I'll use a different colored pen to make my notes. Um, or you can print out a, a fresh one before you turn the project in. Um, let's look. So here's an example from a project that you're probably not going to have in, in this class, maybe, but it doesn't matter. So it'll, it'll have very specific things about it. If it tells you, you know, you need to use this text, then make sure you're using that text. It'll probably tell you why you're doing the, the project, maybe go through the, the process of getting there. And then often they have exact questions on them that I am asking myself as I grade your project. So why not go through and pretend you're grading your project and answer the questions and make sure that you did the things. If you didn't, go back and fix it. Now, if you're taking this class, um, it means that you have tools at your disposal to create professional looking products. And that's the expectation, right? It shouldn't look like student work. It should look like work that was done on the professional machines that all the professionals have access to, the Creative Suite, a good printer, and so on. Really what separates you from a working professional is that they have already been through what you're going for, which allows them to work faster and more efficient. They've got to put food on the table. Uh, but college is the time where you perform like you have all the time in the world. Thus you hear about the infamous all-nighters that are performed in college because you have a project that's due the next day and it doesn't look great right now so you stay up all night or do whatever it takes to get it done so that later in life you don't have to do that kind of stuff. What really matters as a creative, a graphic designer, animator, whatever you're studying to be, um, is your portfolio. Which is why many studies show that the two majors in college that spend the most amount of time doing homework, not surprisingly, pre-med, but the other is you, creatives. Uh, if you are not giving it your all, making the most awesome portfolio that you can, then you're really just fooling yourself and you probably won't end up working in this profession for long or if, if at all. So... I guess what I'm trying to say is you, you kind of make it hurt a little bit now without actually hurting yourself physically or mentally, but you do all the work that it takes. You make that great effort and then um, life could be potentially awesome later because of your efforts now. On your syllabus, you will see the absence drop policy might be on the second page for some of you. Um, in a nutshell, if you are not here marked present the first day of class, you will be dropped. And I use the questionnaire uh, agreement sheet filled in to take roll for the first day. If you miss too many classes, I can drop you. Now, I'm not the kind of instructor that hunts for people to hurry up and drop them. Um, but sometimes I go through the, the system and I look and I say, oh, this person hasn't been here for multiple classes, especially if you miss like classes in a row, I might think, oh, well, they're definitely not coming back and drop you. Um, so if that is the case for you, shoot me an email. Say, for example, here I am in the hospital in traction, but I'm keeping pace with the class um, with the help of my classmates and I will be back. Um, on the other side of that scenario is this. If you aren't attending class and you do want to drop, it is your responsibility to drop the class, not mine to drop you. If something really serious does happen to you during the semester, whether it's an illness, um, a serious breakup in a relationship or whatever it is, it's not that you're entitled to stay in the class even though bad things are happening to you and you can't keep up with the class. You may have to drop the class and take it the following semester when life gets better again. Ultimately, remember, missing classes is a bad idea because you will learn 
soon that late assignments have a bad effect on your grade, plus you're just mid missing out on a lot of the instruction that you need to successfully complete the course.